Hey guys, I'm Mark and today we got kind of follow-up video. We're going to talk about five missing features in Affinity Designer in 2022. Keep in mind this is the second video. So I already have listed the fine important missing features before that. So if you wonder why I didn't mention auto trace or shape builder in this video, that's why because I put it in the first one so i recommend you guys to watch the first one as well i will drop the link in the comment section but let's get started we got five more missing features so why some features are missing because i think designer is not exactly a one-to-one -one copy for adobe illustrator or call it draw it's the own thing this is more like two in one program when you can start the project in vectors and then you can decide to continue in vectors or you can switch to raster graphic in the middle of the project and finish up with a digital image raster image that's not what something you cannot do in let's say illustrator so that's one reason why the tool set is a little bit different here are some missing features mesh gradient is the first one we're going to talk about today that's something that is really important for many designers and unfortunately it's not in Affinity Designer. What can we do about that? The one thing we can do is to add multiple gradients to the same shape. So let's click on this shape. If I go to appearance, I can see there's one fill layer with the gradient. I can add one more fill layer above and I can add gradient to it again. Of course, the top gradient is now covering the bottom one, but we can change that. So let's adjust colors first. All right, blue, violet, and now I can reduce opacity of this gradient at the top. And now I can see this gradient that was below. Can you see that? So now I got one, two, three, four colors because both gradients are mixing together so you can put two gradients in the same shape and got some unique effect all right and what else can we do in case you got some irregular shape let's create irregular shape here maybe you got something like this all right here's our strange shape in that case, if you got the Mesh Gradient tool, you can adjust the gradient to follow this irregular shape. But if we put no more gradient inside, it really look flat and not realistic at all. What can we do about that? We can draw additional shape at the top. Let's say something like this. All right, and now we can use that additional shape to add a new color to it okay so let's say we want some really bright pink color here almost white like this of course now it's really strong so we can change some blending modes here it's a really long blending mode list we can also add a layer style to this new shape to blur it in like that and this way you can mimic having mesh gradient tool by adding shapes on the existing gradient and blending them with blur opacity levels and blending modes so there are actually two shapes but we can use that second shape as we want using pen tool node tool we can adjust that and this way we can have something similar to mesh gradients that's kind of the walk around for our first missing feature let's move to the second one the second missing feature is smart fill something that people coming from color draw really like when you got two overlapping shapes like this you can just fill the color into this intersecting part and this way you create a new shape very quickly unfortunately that's missing here we need to use old methods involving geometry operation boolean operation so simply in this case, I would simply click intersect and I will end up with this part. In some cases, let's say we will have some circles like this. And 
and in some cases people actually use the shape that is here in the middle in with smart fill is you can simply fill it with color and get a new vector shape in that case i cannot do it with intersect because this is not intersecting part so even i use intersect i got nothing here so in that case it, we need to add additional shapes so i will use additional shape only like like a form like a base material use those shapes join them all together using add and then put it above this raw material that I, let's say and simply now we can simply click all all together and we can use subtract and we end up with this part that was in the center so we use kind of like raw material and then we use existing shape to cut out through it and we got only this thing left here so you still can get your shapes but without smart fill simply by using different geometry operations from this panel here at the top so that's kind of how we did it before we got all of those smart fills and other shape building tools all right so you must kind of revert back to old methods in that case blend is another feature that you guys mention very often in the comments Using blend you can simply move from one shape to another. So let's say I got circle, I got rectangle, I got square and then I select both circle, rectangle, click blend and the program generate the shapes in between. Depends how many I need, even hundreds. This is missing in Affinity Designer unfortunately and worse than that I don't really know how to help you guys with that. You of course need to draw those shapes by hand only thing that can help us here is this really really nice shape tool so as you can see our shapes are expanded not only triangle oval and rectangle we got multiple shapes ready to use and some of those shapes got those orange control points that you can use to modify them really quickly and this way you can get your shapes in between shapes all right that's only advice I got here, sorry, I, not, I know it's not that useful. Unfortunately, I didn't find any workarounds for the blend tool. If you know any, let me know. I will be very happy to learn from you guys. All right, the next missing feature is 3D. In the past, I always think about this is some kind of gimmick. No one really used this 3D feature in Adobe Illustrator, but it's really good now. Several years pass, and finally we got good 3D. In Adobe Illustrator and people start using it especially nowadays when those soft plastic like icons are really popular people simply generate 3d images unfortunately in Illustr in designer we cannot do that we need to draw our shapes and then try to mimic 3d that's one way of doing that so you can simply let's say add a grid we got the good options for the grid we can load isometric grid like this one and then we can use pen tool to kind of try to draw 3d shapes there are many tr tricks and tips for this grid this grid is really really good so you can draw them by hand using grids like this there is a 3d option in the layer style panel let me show you that as well let's just switch off this grid so if you click on the object, go to layer styles, there's a 3D style. This is not real 3D. This is kind of expanded lights and shadow on existing objects. So we are faking this 3D glow on it. That's not really what we want, but that's what we got here. So unfortunately, no workarounds for 3D objects. There are no 3D objects in designer so far and the last missing feature is real vector brush there's a lot of confusion about vector brush in affinity designer because we are in vector persona now the default persona design persona and we can use pen tool definitely a vector tool right we can apply a color we can even play with the pressure of this stroke 
that's totally possible no problem on this one but when you apply a brush from the long list here like this we got very nice brush and take a look this brush is on vector right so this must be the vector brush and that's kind of confusing in designer because most of those brushes are raster brushes I don't want to say all of them but <laughs> probably all of them are just raster brushes that follow the vector path so this is like happy medium we got brush that know how to follow the vector path so we can use vector path like this line here draw by pen tool and then there's a special raster brush that will follow that and create really nice texture effect so that's kind of confusing and some people even call it false advertisement because when they say vector brush they expect that the vec the brush itself is a vector in that case we are working with brush that is raster very high quality raster brush but if you really zoom in you can see you can see that it's not a vector and also when you want to export that as svg use it for some other software crafts and stuff like that it will be a raster stroke so we got nice brushes that can follow vector path but most of them are actually rasters keep that in mind all right so it will be really good if you can got also the real vector brush that one we can set up for our vector shapes it will be safe as a vector because normally if you got vector brush like this and then you take this thing and expand this into a shape so i expand my stroke into a shape take a look again layer expand stroke this is still a curve with the brush on it i cannot expand this to be its own vector shape if you got real vector brush you can do it and then you can work with the shape so it would be really good if we can get this feature in Affinity designer 2.0 let's hope for that are there any other missing tools that you would like to see in the new version of Affinity Designer? Affinity Designer 2.0 is confirmed already by the publisher, by the developer, but unfortunately without any release date or even a year. So fingers crossed it will come sooner than later. And as I mentioned, drop in the comment section below which features or tools you want to see in the new version of Designer. Like always, I recommend you guys to check other videos about Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Publisher from my YouTube channel and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!